Who Recording, General Mills, Wakers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, and Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, presents The Lone Ranger. Things are different. How's that? 
Well, when the Indians came to hunt, we opened fire and drove them away. We must have fired on 15 or 20 hunting parties the first few months we were here. They finally got it through their heads that we meant business. It's been a long time since we've seen any sign of redskins. And the ranchers know it. Now that the Indians are gone, the cattlemen would like to drive us out. Then they could pasture cattle here. Tom, the masked man said he came here to warn us. Well, you're not giving him any chance to talk. It's all right, Mrs. Kent. I wanted to hear what Tom had to say. It accounts for the action of the Indians. <laughs> what Indians? The ones who are camped in the valley north of the homestead land. Beyond the hills? Yes. Oh, that's it's all right. As long as they stay there, they won't bother us. But they're not going to stay there. Well, what are they planning to do? Come here, massacre the homesteaders, and burn the buildings. Tom. Wait. How do you know their plans? Tom and I saw them from a hilltop and wondered why they were gathering in the valley. Tonto was an Indian, so it was easy for him to go among them. He learned that they're waiting for Indians from the west to join them. When do you think they'll attack? Well, not before next week. In that case, the cattlemen are likely to have the first crack at us. Well, what do you mean? I told you they've been trying for a long time to drive us out. Well, last week a committee came here headed by a rancher named Bart Belden. Belden said the other cattlemen had authorized him to give us a final notice. What was the final notice? We're to pack our wagons and move out by Saturday of this week. Tomorrow? There'll be a fight. And we'll lose. But every one of us would rather die than leave this land. How many will you have on your side? Well, counting the boys old enough to fire a rifle, there'll be 30 of us. I can't believe those ranchers would come here like savages to massacre you. They don't care how they get rid of us. Drive us out or kill us. In either case, they'll have the land. Tom, you said there were 30 men on your side. 30, if you count the boys. 32, if you count Toto and me. What? I'll be back. Oh, wait, mister. Wait. Tom, mask or no mask, that's the kind of a man we need. Call him back. Right. Ask him to stay with us. Yep. Suspected that the 
tall stranger who broke into the conversation was actually the famous Lone Ranger, wearing a disguise instead of his mask. Bell and I doubt that people would laugh at you, but what if they did? Would that laughter be as hard to bear as the guilt of murdering brave pioneers? You're not a cattleman? No. He's not a cattleman either. Maybe he's one of the nesters. Yeah. In this case, I'm on the side of the nest. What? You come here? Let's throw him out. Maybe we should send him to his friends. We're tar and feathers. That's it. We're tar and feathers. Right. Hey. Throwing guns on us. Look here. If anyone tries that, I'll stop him with a bullet. The cattlemen were frozen motionless by the threat of two guns in the hands of the stranger. Are you men ready to become murderers just to save your foolish pride? Foolish pride? You tell those nesters we'll call on them tomorrow. They're expecting you. Go out the back door. Get him. Teach them what it means to draw guns on men like us. Come on. Come on. There he goes. He had a horse race. Shoot him. Stand aside. Let me get a shot at him. Hell, boys. Hold your fire. Let him go. You were willing to tie and feather him. Yeah, and send him to the nesters as an example. But shooting them is something different. falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Did you ever hear of a cereal box that sings? Well, I'm going to tell you about a special Wheaties box that practically does just that. Here, listen to a few seconds of this record. Pony boy, pony boy, won't you be my pony boy? Don't say no, here we go. Now, wasn't that record sharp and clear? But here's an amazing thing about it. It came from the front of a special Wheaties box. That's right, there's an actual five-inch plastic record sealed right on the front of this special Wheaties box I'm talking about. All you do is take a pair of scissors and cut the record out, easy as pie. Then play it on any 78 RPM manually controlled record player. And listen, Pony Boy is just one of the tunes you can get. There's also On Top of Old Smokey, Glow Worm, Blue Tail Fly, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, and many others. So go down to your grocer right now and pick up the special Wheaties record box. Remember, these records are absolutely free of extra cost. A real bargain in fun. <laughs> Them not start war dance. But many Indian not sleep at night. 
Me see him around campfire. Clean rifle, throw tomahawk. Me see him make plenty war sign. Then they're becoming restless. Uh, them not like long wait. In that case, they may be in just the right mood. Tonto, we're going to challenge those Indians to war. But can the son I'll tell you about it while we prepare breakfast. After a hearty meal, the Lone Ranger and Tonto concealed their camping gear beneath a pile of underbrush, mounted their horses, and rode north.
Led by Tom Kent, brought behind the rows of buildings, firing at the Indians who had taken shelter in their places between the stores and shops. The savages were caught between two fires and fled in panic. Many were shot before they reached their horses. and homesteaders met in the street. The Lone Ranger stood with Bart Belden and Tom Kent. Well, Belden, because of you, the homesteaders left their property. Yeah. But you didn't drive them out. They left so they might help you and the townspeople. We saw the Redskins racing past our land, and they were heading south, so we figured Longhorn might be in for trouble. Well, I, I'm glad you came. It just happened. We were all assembled. I reckon you know why. Yeah, can't I? I know why. You're ready to put up a fight against us. Bart, if you want to attack these nesters, you'll have to do it without me. And without me. Oh, now, how can we move against men who saved our lives? Can't we want men like you in the West? If you folks ever need help, just call on me. Thanks, Bellum. Call on any of us. Oh, call on any of us. I'll swap you some beef for hen's eggs, Kent, and right. we'll both eat better. <laughs> Kent, uh, would, uh, would you shake hands with a man who had the wrong slam, but who's willing to admit a mistake? Glad to. Hey, Bart, <laughs> you were going to ask that mask man some questions. Yeah, I was... Well, where is he? Over there. He's with his engine pad. Hold on, mister. I want to talk to you. Another time, Dolan. We may meet again. Talked to him last night in the cafe. He told me about his trip to town. That's right. He looked a lot different and he wasn't masked. But I remember him saying that he was a friend of the Nestor. He's a friend of yours, too. Now that you're on the right side, he's the Lone Ranger. I don't This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.